Our next speaker is Jonathan Courtney, Ethical Obligations with Regard to Development Policy Selection. Round of applause for Jonathan. Great. All right. So I'm going to be talking very quickly to try to get through everything uh, I want to say. Uh, just to put this in context, uh, this is the really the roadmap for my future PhD. I've only been in there for eight weeks, so take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, essentially, you can sum up my project uh, as taking the insights that I've gleaned while working uh, at Giving What We Can with the EA movement and trying to apply them to Canada's official development assistance spending. Okay. So how am I planning to do that? Uh, don't have time to do that, so we're going to skip that slide. So let's jump right in. Okay, so there's two, basically there's going to be three parts for my PhD. One is going to be justifying a normative principle. So that is the principle that I think most of us in this room, most EAs kind of take for granted, which is that if we can save more people rather than fewer, we really ought to do that thing. Uh, and really to formalize this and really like show that most ethical theories and indeed moral intuition unencumbered by any ethical theory uh, believe this position. So this is the ethics side of my PhD. Uh, also on the normative side, I'm going to be trying to apply uh, a tool, a, a framework, if you'd like, that's used a lot in uh, political philosophy and elsewhere, uh, the idea of public reason. Uh, and for, for, for you know, our purposes, we can essentially define public reason as differing from, uh, differing from ethical evaluation sort of more broadly by trying to derive the principles from what people actually think. So I'm going to try and defend a particular conception of that. I'm going to show how it defends and uh, supports this prioritization principle I mentioned a moment ago. OK, so I defend this ethical principle, but what do we, what do we actually do with that? So this is where, um, oh, actually, no, first, this is, this is my one idea I've had in the first eight weeks, and I really like it. So I'm going to go over it really quickly. So roughly the idea is this. A lot of people in the philosophy literature uh, are really worried about comparability. So if we're going to say something like uh, one year of health is worth X years of education, and they think that that entire paradigm is just wrong. Like, you just can't make those comparisons. Uh, and what I want to say is, like, even if you think that is really likely, if you think that incomparability is true or most likely true, uh, you still have good reasons for ignoring that belief when doing comparisons. Because if incomparability is true, all comparisons are equally valid. So you should move your credence over to uh, the areas in which you think comparability uh, is true. And this is a very similar move that uh, McCaskill and others use in normative uncertainty. And I'm just going to throw that at you because I only have five minutes and I like that argument, but please ask me about it in office hours. Okay, so we come up with these uh, sort of moral uh, conclusions and then what do we actually do with them? So this is where uh, it gets really shaky and this is where the next four years is going to do all the work. But uh, I think, you know, one thing we are going to have is empirical challenges uh, when comparing evidence. So essentially, how do we compare programs like bed nets that have really strong evidence bases with programs that may be more effective but where the evidence is quite weak? Here, I think, essentially, I'm just going to start with GiveWell's approach. Uh, which essentially is to take the evidence we have, our credence that that, that evidence is actually, uh, that the studies are good and that they're true and replicable, and that they apply elsewhere, and then you know essentially multiply out the effect from that, and then hopefully go on from there. All right, so I'm also really interested in having my research be directly uh, relevant to the Canadian context. So I'm doing my PhD in Ottawa and Canada, and I really want to make sure it's something relevant for decisionally for the Canadian government. Uh, just some context for what the Canadian government is doing right now. Uh, currently, Canada has recently adopted uh, an explicitly feminist international assistance policy, so they're moving towards having the majority, the vast majority of ODA target specifically supporting uh, women and girls. And I think my framework can actually really support this approach in, in two different ways. So one is when they advance this position, uh, they're essentially doing so under a particular theory of change. So they say not just that you know, women and girls are the only people we want to help in development, but that by doing so, we essentially are going to achieve our other objectives better than if we didn't uh, essentially prioritize uh, this group of individuals. Uh, and so I think my approach, which is going to attempt to essentially uh, explicitly specify uh, the effect of different interventions and try to do this policy prioritization principle uh, will help to test that assumption, will help to essentially give that a voice and give that sort of some numerical framing to, to justify. Um, and I think it'll also help even if we do, even if this uh, policy continues to be the dominant one and even if we, uh, you know, or essentially only looking at policies that target uh, women and girls, I think that there's still going to be restrictions and trade-offs within that area and so having some prioritization is going to be really important. Uh, and I also want to ensure that it's relevant for policymakers, and I'm going to do that in a number of ways, but uh, the, the, the central one is going to be talking to Global Affairs Canada, which is like our DFID, uh, to essentially get a sense of what's actually happening on the ground, what kind of arguments can be rallied to support more effective policies. All right, and this is probably the most important slide uh, for my purposes, which is the things that I'm most unsure about and the things I'd like your help on. So I'll have office hours, as was mentioned, after this. Uh, if you have any thoughts on any of these questions or the project that I just threw at you very quickly, uh, I'd be really interested uh, in hearing your thoughts. Thank you very much.
Jonathan Courtney.